nitpicks. And Alan talking about movies. They may be best friends, but they always disagree. Nitpicks. And Alan, I seen that. All right. Well, we just watched the five-minute UFC promotional video for Bright. And Sam, you're an orc. <laughs> what's that? You're an orc. <laughs> I'm. Op- I'm not. I'm in the closet. I'm a closeted orc. I'm an orc. Yeah. I'm doing the hand movement, but you can't see it. Well, yeah. What was it? Is it? It wasn't hang loose. It was, but it wasn't. I love you either. Was it? It was. It's orc code. Like orc code. Uh, Sam loved it. Sam's. I didn't love it. I he said it's the just best. Say it was one of them. the best thing he's ever seen. And it's completely you just, changed. You just like blindly hate it, and I don't quite understand why you blindly hate it. Uh, it's kind of cute. Like it's 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 a fun way of promoting a movie. No, I've never seen a movie promoted like that before. That's true, and I think and like I I, I give credit to it for trying to be different. I think it's a good idea, but I think it was poorly executed. I think, especially knowing how bad the movie is. And well, I think that's why you hate it. It's just because you don't like the movie. Maybe the because they did a good job. It, it was filmed. I know you, you were saying you don't really watch UFC, but it the whole thing. I mean, was, are your podcast listeners going to know what we're talking about? I think so. I mean, the, the, the title is bright, and then I mean, I hadn't heard of it until you told me about it. But I said what it was. I said it was the the promotional video. So it's a UFC promotional like video where it's like an orc who's gonna. What is it? What is UFC? What fighting combat is it? It's uh, the Ultimate Fighting Championship, but it's uh, MMA, which is mixed martial arts. MMA, yeah. So you can so do. So it's like an MMA promo video, yeah. except it's an orc instead yeah. from Bright instead of a real person, and um. And it's all about like, oh, they said I couldn't do it because I'm an orc and like, I'm going to do it. So, and then the punchline is he gets like knocked out straight away. So part of my issue with it is it doesn't make any sense. Like the, the whole thing is them trying to do world building, right? Like the whole movie, one of the issues I had with the movie is everything was pointing out like, well, this world has so much more depth than we're showing you. This world has so many more things to it and there's so many layers that you're not seeing but they're there you know they're there two has been confirmed yeah yeah sequel's been confirmed but i just in the first one they're like just having like how the fairy pops up and no one bats an eye dragon in one shot yeah (laughs) it's just dragon and they don't explain it it's just that yeah the the whole the whole reason my commenters are pissed off that i didn't talk about that (laughs) like what what could i really say about it is there's a dragon and that's it well, that's what, that's, that's what the movie did. Us. I can't really criticize it for showing a dragon. <laughs> I just don't think it's fair criticism. But yeah, it's part of that, like, oh, there's so much more going on than yeah. you know. Like, this world is so deep but with lore. One of my issues with the UFC promo video is, one, he gets knocked out almost instantly. And in the movie, there is an orc who lifts a car over his head. So a kid can get a ball. An orc kid can get a ball. But acting as a trailer for the movie. You're not supposed to know that. True. But in continuity with the, the orc universe, I mean, it's, not, the it's not right. the orc universe, like... Continuity with the orc and universe. There's, there's no elven fighters either. I mean... It, it's all a bit weird. Um, it's all a bit weird. I don't think they've properly figured out their universe, like exactly how it works yet. Well, because Joel, I mean, Joel Edgerton is, gets hit by a car. He gets slammed like a, with a car into a wall, I think repeatedly, and is fine. Yeah, I'm, and he gets punched by Travis Brown, who is a legitimate fighter, but not the best, and loses instantly. And it doesn't, it's not, no, it's, it's, it's bad. You can't like it. You need to change your opinion about it right now. I like it. <laughs> you need to watch it and again. And the reason why I'm forgiving that orc universe mm-hmm. lack of continuity is, one, it's acting as a trailer Yeah. Uh, for Bright, so you're not supposed to know anything about Bright. And two, um, if the orc guy did beat him, then the whole like ending would be different. You sort of <laughs> had to have him lose. 
Like, and it was for or those, like, he could have punched all the makeup off Travis Brown's face and him been an orc too. He could have been all the makeup off. I mean, I don't like the idea that orcs put on human makeup. I think that's really dumb. <laughs> Cause I mean, it's so stupid. Matt Sarah is so Matt Sarah won a UFC title. It, he actually it was a, a pretty big deal when it happened um, because oh, yeah. he basically had retired and then did a TV game show, got a chance to fight the champion and knocked him out and won. And like it was a it was a pretty big deal. Uh, it's but, all fake. <laughs> I don't think it is. There's like all fake. There's multiple clips of people like breaking bones, and there's one guy who got kneed into the skull and had his skull CGI. caved in. Oh, is that C- what it is? CGI. That's true. They can do a lot on camera or on, with computers now. Well, I mean, people still think that the Earth is round. Yeah, what's up with that? It's CGI. It's clearly a, these a pyramid. Hollywood effects. No, it's a flat dish-shaped dome. No, it's like a four. A four die, a four sided dice. It's a pyramid. It's got four sides. Well, I disagree. Well, you're wrong. So you should check your facts. Where's the point? Where's the tip of the pyramid? You can't see it. It's Mount oh, Everest. It's in, the, it's in the sky. It's Mount Everest. It's Mount Everest. Yeah, that's one tip. That doesn't make any sense. It makes all the sense. What are you talking about? Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. You're talking <laughs> just... Mount Everest, Mount Fuji, Mount do you Kilimanjaro. Do a professional podcast and, or not? What uh, is this? What have you brought me on to? <laughs> Mount Rushmore. What's going on here? You're trying to tell me that the Earth is a pyramid shape? Yeah. It's a flat dish-shaped dome. It's a pyramid. That's why it looks around in the satellite pictures, because it's spinning so quickly. This fancy Hollywood effect. <laughs> Just like your UFC. You're such a sheep, Alan, for believing that's real. Um, yeah, anyway, he's now a confirmed orc. Yeah, Matt Serra is confirmed as an orc. And it really it really bothered is me that they makeup, used... Is he makeup or is he just like half orc? That's what... Uh, I didn't... Has he just got an orc hand? <laughs> I, maybe. Because he, he, he says that he's like, I'm really proud of you. You're the first openly orc fighter. And he's like, what do you mean? And then he shows that his hand is orcish. And using because openly an orc, orc <laughs> using openly orc feels offensive to, to me. come out the orc closet. Yeah, doesn't, doesn't that feel offensive? It might just be an overly sensitive. Why, why would that be offensive? <laughs> because it's playing on the idea of being openly gay, uh, fighter. Cause that's not something that happens. Or an openly flat earther. An openly flat earther podcaster or uh, yeah. video essayist. Yes. <laughs> I'm the first openly flat earther video essayist. Um, and but, your movie sucks is the first open fairy video reviewer. Is he? That's good. I, yeah. I'm glad that he finally came out. No, he's been he's been consistently like... <laughs> He's always said he was. A fairy? Yeah. He's like said he was since like the very beginning. Yeah, no, I'm good. Like very open about it. Yeah, no, that's good. I'm glad that is. So take your prejudices. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know why you'd be offended by that. You're just a snowflake. Maybe. That's I've, that, not the first time I've been told that. Yeah, you're, 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 you're snowflake. One of the issues um, I think it's offensive is because Bright is so offensive. Well, let's get into the meat of Bright. The meat. The Bright ain't right. Bright is. It ain't right. Is, is so, so, did you see my video on it? I did. Is there anything you disagree with? Um, no, I don't think so. Oh, that's boring. I, sorry. Try and fight me on something. Uh, I'm trying to remember it. That's the issue. It's just not a very memorable video. It's really not. The, well, the movie is so bad. Um, uh, well, your hatred of Will Smith, that's a big problem. This is going to oh, be yeah. the, <laughs> the fourth time the this has come up. The relic of the 90s. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Will Smith is a treasure. And... Uh, all right, I, I top Will five Smith. Will Smith films. Go. Uh, Men in Black, Bad Boys, Independence Day, Hitch, Ollie. Hitch. 
Yeah. Hitch is good. Hitch is in your top... Hitch is in your top five Will Smith films. What's wrong with Hitch? I mean... <laughs> it's like one of the most like forgettable films ever it's, made. It was a prequel to Black Mirror White Christmas. Well, it's kind of... I can't remember it, but I've, I, he, I want to say it's kind of sexist, but I don't know. It probably is. But he's teaching Kevin James how to date women. Oh, my God. What a terrible film. How can, how can you rate it's fun. that above? All right. The pr- best, all right Pursuit the of best Happiness. Will, Pursuit of Happiness can take Hitch's Will Smith point. film is Pursuit of Happiness. Yeah, that's the best one. That's the one where he's given the best performance. It's mm. the one which is really good. The problem with that then, is the actual guy was kind of a terrible person. Doesn't matter. It's a, it's complete. It's a film. It, it doesn't need to be. Like, it can be whatever. It can be. Whatever <laughs> well, it the kind of it matters. It, like if you made a film that like made Hitler seem like the best person ever, and all his choices that film were good, was, like well done and enjoyable. It, it, I mean, why would they matter? As long as you don't believe that Hitler is the best person, but well, that's <laughs> when you finish watching it, you can still enjoy it. Well, I that, mean, like. I watch Pursuit of Happiness as a fiction. I don't even like want to believe it's um, it's based on a true story. I just watch it because it's good. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that might be true. I didn't know that he was a terrible person. I um, and also then, I don't really know how terrible of a person he is. I haven't really investigated, but that's what I hear. That's what you've hear, heard in your bubble. Yeah. In your social media bubble. My echo chamber that I live in. Wake up, Alan. <laughs> I mean, my, my, like, like, that's the only film with Will Smith in where you can say Will Smith has done, like, a really good performance. Like, well, Ali is friends. great. You don't think Ali's? Ali is? Yeah. Ali, Ali's good too. Ali's yeah. good. Yeah. Ali, but Ali, I don't enjoy as a movie that much. I find it really boring. You're also saying a girl's name. <laughs> Ali. <laughs> Ali. Ali. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Um, Oli, yeah, I mean, it's good. It's just really boring. Oh, it, no. It took me so long to finish it. The like, chap is here. Trying. Sorry. What? It uh, reminds me of The Hurricane, which is also really boring. The Hurricane? What is yeah, that? Yeah, the one with Denzel Washington, where he plays The Hurricane. I don't think I saw that one. The guy who... The guy who got put in prison for something that he never did. And he could have been the champion of the world. Um, Undisputed. Yeah. Well, he never could have been the champion of the world. That's just Bob Dylan taking artistic integrity. <laughs> it's like they based the whole movie off that one Bob Dylan song rather than doing any research. Anyway. Uh, you, yeah, Ollie, you're just bitter because your favorite Will Smith movie is Seven Pounds and you have a hard time justifying Don't that. talk to me about Seven Pounds. I will, <laughs> I will leave this podcast if you bring up Seven Pounds. Seven Pounds is my most hated film of all time. There's like no film I hate as much as Seven Pounds. It's pretty not good. It's like so pretentious and bad. But will it, Woody Harrelson time. does get his eyes at the end. Which was the creepiest use of CGI. (laughs) Any sense. You cannot get like replacement eyes. Oh, and he kills himself with jellyfish. Like he's made most of those organs useless because they've got venom in them. (laughs) Yeah. That And he just goes around for ages. It's so boring and so pretentious and oh my god. God, what a terrible movie. I can't believe the same person who directed Pursuit of Happiness made that garbage. I know we've Jesus. talked about 13 Reasons Why before. And Suicide is... Did you say have we? That was the first one we ever talked about. I, I've never seen it, so I don't know. 13 Reasons Why? Yeah, it's it's great. You definitely need to watch I read, it. I read a Wikipedia article on it and just like... <laughs> but what... Did a video a What day. would be the best way for him to kill himself to preserve his organs? I don't know if that's too morbid of a question. We don't have any to go into. other way. Any other way. Well, he's got to. So he gives. He the, can't drown himself because then he can't use the lungs. Well, you might be able to, right? Like water wouldn't well, destroy no. your lungs. It would just stop. It oxygen. would fill. It would fill up the lungs with water. But you could empty them, couldn't you? Don't know if it's that simple. Yeah, I think not. they'd be damaged. I think they would well, be what, damaged. What were the seven organs he was giving away? So he's giving away his uh, liver, lung. 
kidney, bone marrow, corneas, bone heart, marrow. and his beach house. He's not giving away his stomach, so he could overdose and be okay. Yeah, but that would be the same thing as the jellyfish, right? That would be the toxins. No, and- <laughs> no, no, no. Because a jellyfish electric sting will go right through your every organ. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Well, he gave like the worst way to do it if you're going to give out your organs. He gave away his worst way. bone marrow before he died. Painful. And I guess he gave away his beach house before he died. But everything else is heart, corneas, kidney, liver, and lung. Yeah, that movie sucks. Um, <laughs> it, it makes me sad talking about it because it's so bad. Yeah, it's not good. Like nothing happens in it as well. It's very that's pre- like the most very pretentious, frustrating thing. Uh, yeah, and then after that, after, <laughs> in terms of Will Smith performances, I'd also put I Am Legend on that too. I, I Am Legend is a, an interesting one because it was not that good. <laughs> but it, the concept and the idea and everything they did was good, but it was too long and it wasn't. I like the alternative ending, like a lot more than the real ending. Where he blows himself up? Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to remember because he he blows himself up in both, right? But one there's like he... four. There's like four different endings to that film. <laughs> Apparently, the book it's based on is like really, really good, and that's it's what not pisses people off it's, the it's, most. It's not very good. It's very weird. He's like sexually attracted to their vampires in the book, and he like wants to have sex with them, and it's creepy. Well, you would if you were the last person. I don't know. That's uh... human beings are depraved. Depraved, disgusting creatures. That's true. That, like, <laughs> I'm pretty just... sure if you're the last person on earth, that is something you would at least consider. <laughs> and anyway, that makes the book interesting. It's got nuance. Like it's, mm. it's, it makes you question things. Yeah. If it's, they did that it's in just... the movie, that would be a risk. And yeah. so clearly a risk they didn't want to take. It, it's just not like the people say it's super, like super great. And when I read it, I was like, oh, this is not nearly as good as everyone is making it out to be. Like, I think I prefer the movie over the book, but the movie, it, it's just too, too, too long. I think it's, or at least it feels too long. Um, and then I just, I just get the impression that Will Smith just either has a really bad agent or just really, it always chooses bad films. Well, is he, he's not in Scientology, right? Or is he? He isn't, but he, you get the impression he, 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 he could there's be. There's something, something because along those lines. Because he's got that, like, personality. Yeah. Of a Scientologist. <laughs> Cause it, Me and Max love doing that. We love telling people that Will Smith is a Scientologist <laughs> because they always believe it. Well, it, it could definitely be true. You look at his kid, like, did you watch Gotham? No. Uh, I never it, will. It, yeah, don't. <laughs> it's not good, but his wife is in it and she is the worst character and she is so annoying and comes across that she is doing a great job. Like it seems like when you watch her she's like I am nailing this and she is <laughs> awful. <laughs> so bad. Um yeah, but Bright, I just think Will Smith was the worst person to cast for that role. I think if they put anyone else in that film, it would have been like a really good performance because like the script isn't necessarily awful um and like will smith he ad-libbed a bunch like yeah. there's so in- so many inconsistencies with the world like the fact that he talks about shrek like someone tweeted max oh, Landis yeah. being like could you explain like how shrek would be made in the landscape of this film and his response was priceless. It was this, I don't know, <laughs> meaning he didn't write that. <laughs> oh, man. Apparently his original script is like online somewhere. Oh, yeah? I, I haven't read it though. So I talked to you, or I, I assume it was you, I don't know, it could have been Max on Twitter, about it before I watched it. And I was saying like, oh, it's it's a commentary on racial issues between the police and minorities. And your response was, that's wrong. That's a much better movie. This movie is awful. Something yeah. along those lines. Yeah, that was me. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you were so right. It was, it was a terrible, terrible movie. It was not, it, it just, everything they did felt like the wrong choice. 
Yeah, there's there's like no commentary in there no. about race really, apart from racism is bad. That's like the only thing they really have to say about racism. Um and it's a shame because they could have done so so much more with it. Well they it was just they 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 act like racism is bad and yet are so racist throughout the movie. Like yeah, the the, the Mexicans Mexican are yeah. are just Mexican. It's just a Mexican stereotype, and uh, the orcs are just like I. I always feel weird because this is gonna be like the third time I've said this, but the orcs are just black people. But then there's black people also in the movie. And yeah, well, it's a black culture. Like, does that exist? Yeah. Where? Why is it? Like, why is it stereotypical black culture for the orcs, but yet? Like how it just is so stupid. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. And it, it, because yeah, a friend of mine was like, Oh, it's going to be interesting because it's going to have like a black police officer be racist to orcs, but that's not what it is. No, um, it could have been that, but that's not what it is. And like the first 20 minutes is kind of good. Like it's not bad. It's kind of good. I hated how like, they opened it. I thought that was a terrible way to start the movie off. And they, cause it, they have uh, Jacoby buying a burrito and then Will Smith getting shot in the chest with a shotgun. And I get that like it's a it's a decent motivation for his anger with Jacoby and, and all that. But it, it, I don't know. There, I feel like maybe have Jacoby have a different partner and that guy die and Will Smith then have to work alongside with him or something. I think, I think like, Jacoby should have been the main character. I don't know well, yeah. why he wasn't the main character. I think like, he was really supposed to be it. until Will Smith was was put in it. I kind of feel like Will Smith hijacked the movie. Like, I don't know if it was intentionally like him throwing his weight around or anything like that. Like, I don't think that was necessarily the case. But I think as soon as he got attached... It's got this Zootopia vibe to yeah, it. Yeah. Uh huh. With it's, like, oh, this is the first ever orc police officer. It's Zootopia, like, Training Day, and Lord of the Rings all combined into one movie. Yeah, because it's not, it's not, but it doesn't really follow Jacoby very much. So no. it kind of doesn't seem very earned at the end when Jacoby gets this like medal. It's a it's a strange one. Like I really like Joel Edgerton in this film. Like yeah. the guy who plays Jacoby, I think he does it really well. And um, I think it's I think it's like it's so it's it so easily could have been very good, but the fact that it's very like generic with the way that it does its storytelling and its action sequences and the way that like Will Smith plays this like unfeeling like charismatic psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> kind of character and then and then the elf character is just like what like yeah. like she she doesn't even have a character she doesn't mm. even they She's didn't even parkour. want to give her a character and like i've i said in my video that she's sexualized and i got like quite a bit of backlash from that because i'm like oh she's literally wearing overalls but like guys she is very clearly sexualized because she's this like character that just is like needing protection all the time and is like very like whimsical and like this kind of pixie chick and she's just and it's just very clearly like she's supposed to be like this idea of of a woman, you know, like don't say anything, just like <laughs> just say like, like follow us, we'll protect you, like you don't need to say anything. And she's just so like childlike. It's just kind of weird. Because none of the other elves are like that. So I just don't know why. I feel like she just might be autistic <laughs> or something. Oh, this movie. Um it's offensive, it's bad, it's poorly done. Uh the, well the effort the filmmaking is done pretty well. Uh, Until he gets to the action sequences. And yeah. And it's like this shaky cam, like what's going on? Kind of badly choreographed, weird action scenes. And it just becomes this weird thing where everyone's trying to get this wand. But like they explain why the evil elves want the wand. Yeah. Very badly, very like generically. Like they want to raise a dark lord. Like... Come on, guys! Like, like you could have made them want the one for a more like interesting, interesting reason than that. Well, Maybe they want to like wipe out all the orcs because they're like really bad or something. Or they whatever. They say that you can do anything with these magic wands, which is one a terrible device in a movie. 
You should never have something that can just do, yeah, just do anything. Like, you know, cause then uh, why are you not just doing anything? Like, cause the girl can use the wand, never uses it until, you know, towards the end and the, her raising Jacoby back to life, almost killing her is like it, it, it doesn't seem like anything else would almost kill her. Like it's, it's that dark magic of bringing someone back to life is the issue. But other than, other than that, why didn't they use it to get away or to teleport themselves somewhere or do, I don't know, anything become invisible or, you know, like, you see, you see the wand drains her energy. But that's, but it's kind of a, a, a normal. Which is why she's constantly needing protection because she used it in the beginning. <laughs> but that, that she's, her energy's drained. But the energy draining thing is kind of a normal fantasy trope of well, when you bring you know, someone the, back to life. The weird thing is like, when we made this bright video, we were kind of thinking like, this is the most like, uncontroversial video we've ever made apart uh-huh. from like the evil within being a great movie and why you should watch it because that's just like that's just pop that's just like positive like who cares not a single person has been like this movie sucks how dare you like everyone's like yeah it's a great movie but like bright we thought like yeah this is uncontroversial everyone's gonna like agree with us like this is gonna be fine but the amount of people that really like this film and are really angry that I would dare criticize it. I find really funny. And it's just weird. Because it's like Bright is the most generic, like, bland film ever. And they're like, they're just these abusive, aggressive comments. Also, I want to bring up as well something that me and Max were talking about yesterday that we yeah. find really funny. You know, like, <laughs> the B episode in Black Mirror? Yes. That episode is entirely about, like, not hating someone blindly on the internet. Uh-huh. The amount of abusive comments we get from people that like that episode is so funny. There's something like hypocritical about like watching an episode of Black Mirror about like abusive hate online and being like, yeah, this has really gotten to me because abuse, like abuse online is terrible. Oh, what? He didn't like it? How dare you? You, <laughs> like, like, this is comments is just like, like, you clearly don't understand. Like, really aggressive, like, mean comments on the video. And it's like, I thought you liked this episode. If you like this episode, you can't leave, like, aggressive comments on it. People, pe- uh. the things people will, like, uh, Logan Paul is getting a lot of defense. And well, yeah, I mean, he's got a strong fan base. But any fan base, it's a, it's amazing what people will defend, like how blindly people will defend anything. Because if you like something, it can never be criticized. And well, that's they shouldn't be such criticizing a... Logan Paul. They should be criticizing Chubbs. Yeah, that's true. Have you, have you made any headway on taking him down? Oh, yeah. I've made a, I've been, I've been sort of behind the scenes. I've been doing a bit of action on the dark web to try and shut <laughs> down his agents. Um, but like nothing public yet. So I'm not willing to talk about what I've been doing yet. But I'm on my way. I'll, I'll cut this part out because I don't, I don't want to connect this idea to you and the dark web. But did you hear about people paying Bitcoin to get Boogie2988, whatever, killed on the dark web? No. Yeah, someone paid like this is. A I few have years. done that with Chubbs. That's what I've done. <laughs> people you can put that in. I don't yeah? want people knowing. All right. Yeah. I, it if, must be stopped. If it happens, it's gonna. <laughs> I don't want to be implicated in any way. You are. No, I refuse. This is you. You're I, implicated. I, I don't know don't anything. Don't cut out the bit about you saying <laughs> that you'll give me Bitcoin. I'm not giving anyone so Bitcoin. <laughs> Oh yeah, now you're changing your opinion. <laughs> oh man. Uh, Bright. Jacoby. Uh, he's a decent character, but underutilized. Will Smith is Will Smith, and he's overutilized. Uh, Will Smith is like the most charismatic police officer, like, ever. 
Well, he's like making one-liner jokes and like he's really friendly with the orcs like they know him and he's like oh yeah tell me about this he's like the guy from training day he's like yeah i, I know these streets and like and then and then the cop's like no one wants to work with you i'm like why wouldn't you want to work with this guy he's like the the like funniest sweetest like cool cop that exists i think the worst the only worst choice would have been like the rock <laughs> yeah <laughs> that would have been bad because then i think the you, rock might have tried harder than will smith yeah probably but you know they would have had the rock fist fight an orc who again is super strength in this world and yet can't beat up travis brown in a ufc fight that's insane it's not I'm, i don't know if it's canon it's canon now i don't think it's canon I it, think it's just a it one has off, to be. like fun little No, trailer. this this isn't a Star Wars legend. This is this is canon complete. <laughs> I don't think it's canon. You don't get to decide that. It's canon. I, I'm saying I don't think it is. I'm not deciding. I'm just saying I don't I'm think it's I'm telling you, you do not have the authority to make this decision. Well, I'm going to tweet Max Landers <laughs> and ask him if it's canon. <laughs> Max Landers is now like whether he said they doesn't want to write Bright too, but like he's in charge of the canon. He he has the Bible. He is the, yeah he's the one that wrote everything about Bright. <laughs> we uh, I, I I was talking to Ross McIntyre a little bit when we t- we did an episode on Suicide Squad, which was also directed by David Ayer, and we great movie. <laughs> we were talking about how Killer Croc. Is basically the, the preemptive or the, uh, is the orcs. Like that was his, he's like, Oh yeah, I could do a movie with just a bunch of these characters. Cause Killer yeah, Croc. Killer Croc's so great in that movie. <laughs> but he's, he's exactly the orcs. My favorite scene in Suicide Squad is when Killer Croc, like, goes into the water and he does this weird like crouch thing do you remember that uh he's, when he he, when does he, he like, like takes his shirt it. off yeah 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 and he <laughs> just like lowers himself into the water <laughs> you think that's because it was only like two feet of water and he had to yeah, <laughs> disappear it's really funny it's so funny <laughs> oh man that movie that movie is awful too uh it's not David, as bad as bright the bright is worse Suicide Squad was more disappointing. Uh, Training Day is great. What Training else? Day is so good. What else did David Ayer do? He, there was something else that he did that was... He didn't do Training Day. Yeah, he did. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. You're thinking of the other one he did with Jake Gyllenhaal. I don't think the, so. He did, he did not do Training Day. Why am I, why do I, why is it in my head for so long that he did Training Day? Cause he did a different film. He was a boxing. producer on Training Day. <clears throat> yeah, but he okay. didn't do it. That's why. That, that makes me feel yeah. a little bit better that, the, uh, the plot of Bright being about like this cat and mouse between the wand. So the orcs want it because, why do they want it? Do they even explain why the orcs want it? Uh, well, the guy from the mini project explained why everyone would want it because this means a bigger penis and all the money and anything you would want. Um, yeah, but can you even get orc brights? No, I don't think so. Why didn't they just say that the orcs want it so that they can smash it? Like that would have been good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, why didn't they just smash it anyway? They, Why did they need to keep hold of it? This movie set up that it was going to be Jacoby as the bright. Like from the beginning, they're talking about, oh, the elves are generally the brights and very rarely is a human ever a bright. The movie should have been the first orc bright, you know, like that. Yeah. That's where I don't really care to be honest. Well, that's it's the thing. The, that scene is so dumb though when the well, police are in the room and they're very, like, yeah, explain everything about this. It is very <laughs> contrived, and it's like the only scene without Will Smith or Jacoby, and it's just really weird. Well, there's the one with the evil orc, but that's to do with the plot. These police officers just interview this old man, and they explains everything about the film, and they're like, "Great, do you reckon that was a reshoot? I reckon that was a reshoot." Uh, probably. 
They, they, they were like, oh yeah, it's too confusing. We like, gotta fill some holes. Audiences need to know exactly what's happening. The worst part about that scene, I believe it was that scene. It might have been the one before it, but they said, they're like, do you know who we are? And they said, yeah, you're the magical feds. And I was like, oh no. Yeah, it's that this, scene. Yeah. <laughs> this is not good. I mean, even if they were the main characters, it would be a better film. Like, what do the magical feds get up to? Yeah. The, and this what, idea of like the first ever orc cop, like I don't really understand why he would be the first ever orc cop in this world because these orcs aren't like idiots, like they're fairly competent. Yeah, well, they're stereotypes. And, like That's you their... would have thought there would have been one in the sixties or something. Well, they said they said the issue is that the orc sided with the dark lord, and because they did that, they've been kind of shunned from society and like pushed to the outskirts. That I mean, why wouldn't you? Him. Why why wouldn't you side with the Dark Lord? He's got it. He knows what he's doing. That's true. I would side uh, with the Dark Lord. It's the Dark Lord. It's so dumb. Like Harry Potter is like a kids' film, and they give Voldemort more of a background than they give the Dark Lord in this film. It's just supposed to be for adults. They uh, one of they my... just say he's the Dark Lord. That's all they say about him. Yeah, he's the main antagonist. Like he's the main conflict. Like you can't resurrect the Dark Lord. He's dark. Well, well he... the Dark Lord's like a chill guy. Like <laughs> they bring him back, and he's like really nice. It's just his skin tone is why he's called the Dark. Yeah, he's that's like exactly super nice. Why. <laughs> and like, what's in it for the elves to bring the back the Dark Lord? Like, what do they get? Like, why I... would they do that? I've never understood that motivation and it's, it's really bad in like comic book movies, but the, the people who are willing to summon someone who is going to destroy the world completely. Like why, yeah, and it, why would you do that? Why is that your goal is to end the world when you're in the world? What if you like, if you're really that upset, you know, like why do you have to take everyone out with you? Yeah. And like, I also feel weird because that's the second time I've like talked about suicide in a more positive way. I'm I'm very against suicide, by the way. I just want to just for the record, <laughs> just for the record, I, I think suicide is very bad. I mean, I I just I just don't understand, like, because they they're like, oh yeah, like this dark lord geese as well. Great, like we need to bring him back. But the implication is anyone with a wand can bring back the dark lord. But well, it was you... the elves one to begin with i think you like need all three it. i think you need three wands it's kind of like the mother boxes in justice league well do they have three do they do they only have they only have one though i think they have the other two where were they and i don't think they showed them i think they've said it though <laughs> well this whole movie is tell and not show which is number one rule of making movies like one of my one of my problems with this movie is they allude to this deep world of look at all of the stuff that's going on. Um, I think we, I don't think we talked about it at the beginning of the recording, but I was mentioning it at when we were talking about it in general is the, the scene, the movie kind of opens. Well, after Will Smith gets shot, he's at home with his wife and his wife is like, Hey, you got to go kill that fairy. And he, they don't, they don't make a big deal of it. And the idea is like, no, this world, these, this world is different than where you live. Like, get ready. There's going to be a lot of I things have you I- have to... I have an idea for why they put that in. The idea, I think, is is that, like, everyone is guilty of, like... Because, um, like, fairies aren't an animal. Fairies aren't an animal. They are, like, a race. Mm-hmm. They're, like, a, they're sentient. Like, the idea is that, like, everyone has this racial hierarchy. And, like... a like oppressing people below you is like become normalized to some degree. And I think that's why it was put in there. Well, to me, it came across as that they were world building that these things that if, if a fairy showed up in fairy show up at the end of the movie as well, that's how the movie ends. The fairies there. Yeah. But the, what I'm saying, like if a fairy showed up in our world, it would be a major event, right? Like, It'd be all over the news and people would be talking about it and there'd be conspiracy theories about it and how it's just fake news and, you know, people are just trying to distract you from what's actually going on. Trump would probably tweet something about death to fairies (laughs) and how they won't take away America and he's going to nuke them. Oh, man. I, it's, it's very upsetting. 
that whole <laughs> go and nuke the fairies. <laughs> but they don't. They they allude to all of these different things. They show the you know they drive through the the city and like here's the elves are rich and you know here's the orcs and they're poor and they just point out like all these little things that would make the world more interesting almost. Uh, a lot of it is, is is just dumb, so it probably wouldn't. But they don't they don't dig into anything. They just like, no, this world is deep. Don't worry about it. Like here, like notice this, but we're not going to do anything with it. We're just going to tell this really bland, basic fantasy story. Exa- exactly, exactly, exactly. And the thing is, is Netflix should be able to make like films that are different. They should not be like pinning onto these classic tropes that we've all seen like a million times. Yeah, if this wasn't set in modern day, this would be a terrible fantasy movie. I mean, it's a terrible fantasy movie anyways, but the only thing that makes it, it interesting... If it was a normal film, it would be a terrible action film. It would just be bad. Yeah, yeah. Like, like the, oh, you've got some people in weird makeup on, so therefore it's like worth something or valuable in some way. Well, if it was set like in the Lord of the Rings world, it would be so boring. Like if you took out the modern day element, it would still be I mean, awful. The world is the world is done weirdly because the idea is that these fantasy beings have been here since like day one. Yeah, but like it's just our world. Like that's all it is. It should be like slightly different. Like there should be like castles and stuff and like more mythical fantasy elements into the, like the landscape of the world that yeah. they're living in. Or like giant statues or some like and something like, fantasy. They advertise this film everywhere. Yeah. Like the everyone, UFC. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> everyone everyone saw a trailer for this film. Like if you have a Netflix account, like you go on Netflix and it's like bright, 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 look at this, look at this, watch this. You're like, oh my god. They advertise this in cinemas. Yeah. I saw an advert for Bright in like November. When I went to see when I went to see Justice League, there was an advert for Bright. Well, I bet you they gave Will Smith a lot of money to be in it, and he shouldn't. He should not have been in it. No, he was probably one of the worst parts of the movie. Like the movie Absolutely. starts, the movie starts with that the opening credits, and that was great. The, yeah. the the soundtrack and I started watching it and I was like, oh, maybe this won't be shit. That was what <laughs> I thought. I so I turned to Max and I was like. This might be good. Yeah. It's like, this might actually be good. And he, and he's like, oh, I'm not sure. And we're watching it. And like, there's a Jacoby and Will Smith scene before they go to like the police station. Yeah. And I'm like, this is kind of fun. Like, I'm enjoying this. I was like, this is kind of good. And he was like, yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I quite like it. And then the second they find that wand. And the second that that stupid car chase happens, we're like, oh no, what's it doing? <laughs> what, what is it doing? And then the whole film is just, it's just, the bad man want the wand. Gotta stop them from getting the wand. And I'm like, come on guys, like, come on Max Landis. Like, is this really, <laughs> really the story you wanted to tell in this world? Yeah, well, there, that's, that's the thing, right? There's so many interesting things they could have done with this world that they established. You take out the magic wand and you have a huge playground to really like poke at things and like, you know, say like, ah, oh, this is kind of a weird thing here, right? Well, this is what happens in actual life too. The like frustrating that's... thing is, is that people enjoyed this film though. It's a, a better audience <laughs> rating than The Last Jedi. And like, say what you like about The Last Jedi, but you can argue there's a much better film than Bright. Yeah, no, for sure. I didn't really like The Last Jedi, but it is way better than Bright. So people like those tropes. Like, they liked how, like, generic it was. But people, people, uh, people are lazy and racist, and they want to be spoon-fed things that are easy to consume. Yeah. And the thing is, is we can criticize this film for being as generic and easy to consume as possible, but they, they know what they're doing. Like, yeah. it just, if this didn't get such a sharp critical, like, response of all the critics hating it, then, like, this film would have almost, like, gotten away with it, like, and people would have just enjoyed it. <sighs> it, I, the, cause there's, there's no reason. 
This movie could have been great. Like that's that's my biggest frustration with Netflix is there's they could do stuff that is so good and so cool and they're like, eh, that's okay. Let's like let's just do what everyone else is doing and just get people to watch. And it's weird that their model is not pay per view, right? Like you don't have to pay to watch yeah. Bright individually. So it's they were sort of I think they were hoping that Bright would get more people to get a Netflix subscription. Yeah. But like I don't know why you would do that. Why why you would get a Netflix to watch Bright. Like and if that was what they were if they want people to get Netflix, they need to make more interesting films. Well, like you compare Daredevil season 1 to Iron Fist. I would almost guarantee that word of mouth sold more subscriptions to Netflix from Daredevil season one than Iron Fist ever will. Yeah. You know, yeah, like, I mean, a huge thing for Netflix in the UK was Breaking Bad because it was, it's not on any TV mm. sh- channel in the UK. The yeah. only way for us to legally watch Breaking Bad is to buy it on DVD. And then it's like, oh, you can just watch the whole thing on Netflix. Boom. The yeah, UK was just turned, like changed into Netflix very, very quickly. And, um, and that's just because Breaking Bad's really good. So, yeah. So like, you just got to make more good things. Like Beasts of a Nation is like really good, but like, mm. it's not, it's not quite like mainstream enough. For people to actually get Netflix too. I'd be interested in seeing it. It's a shame they never published like the viewing figures. Cause yeah. I'd be curious. Cause like Box Office Mojo, like they know exactly, you can check that and see exactly how much a film makes. But when it comes to this new media, there's no way of knowing whether it was a flop or not. Yeah. You've just got to work on your own echo chamber to sort of see. But, um, a friend of mine, um, a black friend of mine, he oh. was saying that, like... In you have a black friend? Yeah. <laughs> I actually have a friend uh, who's black. I can, I can but, say this because I have a black friend. Yeah. <laughs> no, but uh, it's, it's important to know that he's black. Uh, he, Is it? He basically said... You sound yeah, racist right important. now. <laughs> no, it's important to know because he said in his in his circle on social media, like, around him, everyone loved Bright. Everyone thought it was really good. Well... Is all his friends black? Cause that's, yeah, the, that's the important yeah. part. Yeah. Cause yeah, now you're, you're making so, me have an assumption that he's surrounded by black people on his social media. And I, that, that's not, yeah, a fair yeah, assumption. he is. That was, that was his point that he was making to me is he was saying like, look, man, like you can call this like bad and you can say that it, what he was saying about race was very generic, but like in my circle with my friends, they all really like this film. It, it's crazy that people like it to me because it, it, it was, I don't know. I like, I know there's a lot that I don't like. I, Taylor, Taylor likes to tell me that all the time that I hate every movie I see. I just really like movies and when they're disappointing, it's extra. Yeah, yeah. It, it's extra disappointing. And this was that like it, I look at it. It's like, man, you had the budget. You had great actors that you could have gotten. Other actors for the same price or less. This is like, like the biggest film Netflix have ever made. Yeah. They definitely had the budget. They had the potential. They, there's nothing in their way. This was not an underdog story. You know, this is, this is Goliath making a movie and they f- failed miserably in my eyes, but maybe they're happy. I mean, they're making part two. So they, it's just, it's just so frustrating. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll see Bright too. Like, this is the thing. I'll watch that's, it. That's that's the other honest, thing. Like, they should to be honest. Like, the thing is, is like, when it comes to crappy movies like Justice League, like I paid to see Justice League. Yeah, my tickets value is just as has just as much value as any anyone it's, who enjoyed Justice League. Yeah, but it's a it five star Netflix, ratings. It's a five star rating as much as someone who loved it. Like you paying for a ticket is saying this is the best movie ever as much as it is saying anything else. But it, when it comes to Netflix, like my opinion of it means more. I think yeah. 
I think well, it means more. I think it has more of a value because when I say to someone, a friend of mine, I say, oh, Watch Bright is really good. It's on Netflix. Mm-hmm. And they go, oh, I don't have Netflix. I might be like, well, look, man, like if you want to get Netflix, like check it out if you do get Netflix. Like, and that, that, that pushes them to like ongoing finance. Yeah. So, so, it, but with Justice League, I can say, yeah, Justice League's garbage. Don't watch it. And they won't buy a ticket. Or wait till it's on with, Netflix. But yeah, but with Netflix, like me being like, watch Bright, they ha- that that's like an ongoing source of income for Netflix. So yeah. it's more in their more in their interest to make good films. Yeah. Well, and there used to be a time when Netflix original stuff was really great, and now it's just like really not good. Well, the, back then, or, you know, a couple of years ago, I think most of the Netflix originals were produced by Netflix. And now they are shopping, uh, the, the festivals. They're going to the festivals and just buying stuff up. I'm like, oh, that's good. You know, let's, let's get that. That's good. Let's get yeah, that. Yeah. I mean, I think and the quality was is co made with Sony or something. Uh, yeah. I think Bright is more of their thing than a lot of the other ones are. Like a lot of so the other ones Universal are finished products. Out of it, mm. And then, and then Netflix just paid it instead. Uh, it, this movie, one of, one of the things that really bothered me about this movie, and this may be an Iron Man pizza moment again, but here we go is when Will Smith and Jacoby are hiding from the Mexicans in the club. And the Mexican gangster in the wheelchair says, I need that wand to fix this and pulls up a shirt and shows a colostomy bag. Nobody is looking at that guy. Will Smith and Jacoby are hiding. Why is he showing off a colostomy bag to no one? And that's your biggest problem. That's the worst part of Bright in any aspect. Well, you don't know if they were looking or not. Because the camera wasn't on them when he was showing it. But right before, they were hiding, and they yeah, could they not could have see. they looked when he said to fix this. No, it didn't happen. <laughs> You're wrong. You, you can't prove that. You can't prove You that. can't prove that they did. Yeah, but um, you can't prove they didn't, which is more important. But right before, the evidence is leading you to believe that they did not see it. Because right before, they well, were not looking. That's a yeah, strong point. But then you can argue, why would he show it if they weren't looking? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm upset about. Why would he show it? It's stupid. <laughs> because they were looking. They were not looking. They were they were doing it only for the camera. What about <laughs> what what about like anything that happened with that character? It's just bad. Oh man. <laughs> So everything with him is bad in that movie. I like it's, watching this movie. And then also, so I, is there a spell to fix that specific illness? Yeah, and the like, wands can the do anything. The dumbest thing about wanting the wand is that, like, you pick it up and you explode. Like, mo- chances are, like, if you were part of these this Mexican group, you wouldn't. I would be like, you know what? I'm probably not a bright. I'm not going to pick it up. Well. I- the only way you can know you're bright is by picking it up, right? Exactly. There's no one. Is it the same with elves? If you're an elf and you pick it up, are you going to explode automatically too? The police officer brings it up, picks it up, and he's fine. Yeah. So maybe he was a bright too. Maybe being a bright isn't as like rare as everyone thinks it is. Yeah. There should be a way of checking for brights without almost killing yourself well they they you can also pick it up with gloves if you wear a glove you can pick it up can you yeah the guy from the mini project and suicide squad picks it up and puts it in jacoby's bag with a glove when they're right before when they're setting them up and they're like jacoby's gonna die and they're telling will smith and stuff <sighs> Yeah, but then you can argue you just picked up very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> it's just... Can you still use the wand if you're wearing a glove then? Well, that's the question. What Do you do you have to have contact with a wand to do magic, or can you just do it with a glove? Then why wouldn't everyone just have a glove on? Exactly. This movie's stupid. 
Uh, the movie's so stupid. <laughs> what like, are the? Why uh, wouldn't they just give the? Why do you have to be a bright? Like why? I know the title, obviously, but why? Why wouldn't we just like say anyone can use a wand? You just need to know the spells. Well, then it would be too convenient. Because then, like, what's going to happen? The Mexicans get the one, then what? Like, they don't know any spells. One of the one of the things I was going to say earlier was they they make it up, they make the wand up to be able to do anything, everything, whatever you want it to do, it can do, and yet they only use it as a laser gun. Ninety five yeah. percent of the time, other than bringing Jacoby back to life. It is and just a, the Dark Lord. <laughs> and summoning the Dark Lord, but they don't even do that. They, yeah, and why isn't Jacoby like messed up from being brought back to life? Yeah, he should have come back as the Dark Lord. Yeah. Him be the enemy? If it ends like with a Stranger Things esque ending where like he gets the medal and his eyes glow a bit. Is that they could have, they could have ended it like that? Yeah, they should have. They should have, he should have eaten Will Smith. He should have put him right in his belly. Just like <laughs> eating all of him. And gone like, everything you heard about orcs is true. Yum, yum, yum. That's um, why, yum, yum. that's why he became a police officer. That would be the, so much more interesting. Will Smith. <laughs> if he, if he actually did betray him in the beginning, set him up, like everything I about know, the I orcs. Know. Exactly. Cause that would have been cool. That would have been interesting. Yeah. It's, oh, this movie, it just makes me angry. Well, yeah, it's not good. It's just bad. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's, it's not good. It's bad. It it's feels not, not good. like the most effort into a lazy movie I've ever seen. It's bad, bad, not good. <laughs> <laughs> what, what would you do different if you were going to change this movie? Um, I would make Jacoby the main character. Yeah. I would have Will Smith not being played by Will Smith. I'd have a slightly more like Jake Gyllenhaal. Well, okay. Does does Jacoby need a partner? Can the partner? Can Jacoby kill the partner at some point? And like the partner turn I mean, on he Jacoby. Could do, he could do. I would just have it about like his struggles in like in like the police force. Yeah. And, like, just take away the wand completely, right? Yeah, and then the supernatural, the like kind of fantasy elements like trickled more in, in, in like a urbanized, modernized way. Yeah. They could have, you know what they should have like, done? A wand and it's like a casual thing. Like a wand is like drugs. Like it's just banned. It's just like illegal. Mm. They should have made like a, 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 high a meter made. You need a, you need like a license like to have the, to have the wand. Where it's just like, like a gun or something like that. Yeah. They should have made Jacoby a meter maid. And then he stumbles upon a, a, a talking fox. A talking fox that is, they're uncovering by Will Smith. this conspiracy <laughs> that making all the orcs kill people. Yeah. That would be, that would have been the way to go. I mean, Max Landis already ripped off Akira. I don't know why he couldn't just rip off Zootopia. I mean, he did to some degree. <laughs> Chronicle is Akira Light. I mean, I think Zootopia is a better film about race, even though they are constantly like shoving in racism is bad, like over and over again in Zootopia. You know, Z when I, I went to see Zootopia in the cinema and with a group of friends, and I came out of the film and I went. That was good. I enjoyed it. But the only thing about it is I wish it had some sort of moral message, like about like <clears throat> how you should live your life. Like, I felt like it was just a film about talking animals and it didn't have any relatable social moral themes to it. And they're like, well, well it's about racism. And I'm like, no, it's not. It's about yeah, it's talking not. animals. It didn't like, know what, what it was about? about. From scene to scene, the the... What obviously I was being sarcastic because the themes of racism are very strong. They're, right? But they're not though. The from they are. from scene to scene, it can't decide if it's about racism or sexism or prejudice. Like the well, it's all the same. It's all part of the same thing. But you can't do about, that. You can't. It doesn't matter what you're born as. Like you can do the same as everyone else. Yeah, but they use like, it different doesn't matter tropes. If you're a girl it doesn't matter if you're. You're black, doesn't matter if you're a rabbit, doesn't matter if you 
you are old, it doesn't matter if you're young, it doesn't matter if you're fat, you can do everything. But so they stop judging me. They use tropes. Stop it. They stop use judging <laughs> me. Seriously, stop. Can you stop? It's the problem is you you're stop? British. Can you just stop and you judging don't me? understand how people make movies. See, this is it. This is the prejudice I get on your show. <laughs> You invite me on and you're just, you're just, you can't let me talk about Zootopia <laughs> in a sarcastic way without taking me seriously because I'm English and you're not used to sarcasm. I'm sick of this. No, the problem is Zootopia doesn't know what it's doing. It's not you being British. That's a separate problem, but equal. Zootopia is unaware of what social issue they're trying to hit on and they're doing it I because I they want to hit on all of them. Because they want to no, hit on all of them, so it is more consumable to everyone. If it's you're mostly able, about racism. It's, I would say and it's, it's got some themes of sexism in there too, but it, th- those are right, and it doesn't make it unfocused. It's very focused. My pro- point was though, Zootopia is it's too focused, but the way you can get around that and justify that is by saying it's a kids' film. My counter argument to saying it's a kids' film would be saying like, look, you can deal with these themes in a more nuanced way for a kids' film. You don't have to like treat it like racism is bad every scene. Mm-hmm. Which is what Zootopia is saying, basically. But, I think you know, racism is not a bad thing. Films, racism is not a bad thing. <laughs> I, I got nowhere okay. to go with that. I don't actually. You got mean nowhere that. to go with that. <laughs> I was gonna double down on that, but I decided that would probably not go very well. <laughs> Just stop that train before it leaves the station. <laughs> Well, yeah, so that's Bright. <laughs> <laughs> uh, bright 2. Are you, Can't wait. Are you going to go to the theater dressed up as an orc? Even though they're not going to show it at a theater. It won't be on in the theater. I will see it for sure. <laughs> take a, take an I iPad will to the theater. probably capitalize on it and make a video on it. Um, probably. I can't wait to do my first ever sequel video. I'm really excited for 13 Reasons Why season two. Really oh. excited for Doctor Who season 10 or 11. I can't remember which Aren't one. Aren't they in like 50? No, yeah, no, they reset it. Wow, that's... So dumb. in 2005, it reset to season one. That doesn't seem been reasonable. on TV for like 30 years. Oh, uh, I guess that makes more sense. So they just erased everything that happened before at that point? No, no, it's all canon. But they just reset the seasons. See, this is the problem with the British. No, no, it makes sense, because they were on season, like, 50. And, like, if they called it season 54, it's, like, a completely different show. So it'd be weird. It's a soft reboot. So, yeah. Uh, I can't wait for my first sequel video. I'm gonna get into Bright 2. Gonna get into, um, Jim and Andy 2. <laughs> where on you- the set of, on the set of the Truman Show, he kept on pretending as if there weren't any cameras there. <laughs> Do you Jim think it, Truman. it should have been called Andy and Jim? Do, and like, there's does- a show called Andy and Jim. Oh, is it? A there? TV show in the UK called Andy and Jim is two puppets. No, that's Rosie and Jim. Oh, oh my goodness. You Rosie keep, and Jim. You keep undercutting your, your. Do, uh, do, do, do one of those edits and call it Rosie and Jim. And I'll <laughs> describe it. You haven't seen it before, but I'll describe it to you. So it's these two weird looking puppets. Yeah. Yeah. And it goes Rosie and Jim. Rosie and Jim, and they live on a houseboat. I swear they live on a houseboat. And it's these two weird puppet things. And, um, and all they do is stand around and like talk about a bunch of crap. It's like kids, but I used to remember it fondly. And then there's another one with a dog in a wheelbarrow. I can't remember what that's called. It might be the same show. That just sounds like you made everything up. No, no. <laughs> so you search in Rosie and Jim intro, you're in for a treat. And then you'll get UK 90s TV intro. So there's Okie Doke, which is about an ape, <laughs> acorn man who lives in a tree. And it goes, Okie Doke. <laughs> uh, see, I had Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Full House. Um, 
No, all all kids, with Mr. All kids shows in the UK involve puppets or animations to some degree. There was another one called The Clangers. Wasn't there someone who just got, like, a couple of years ago, like, got busted for being a pedophile on one of those puppet shows? I don't, I wouldn't know about anything about that. Um, I was but, strangely defensive but about that. The, <laughs> well, well, you're I, just attacking I, my I, childhood now. I, I don't know anything about that. Let's, uh, let's not talk about any of that stuff. I've, uh, I've settled that, I've settled that a quote was, already. Okay. I, I knew him. Personally? When I was younger. Yeah, when I was a kid. And, um, he took me into his houseboat. And he brought out the Rosie and Jim puppets. And he got very close to me. And he said, Thanks for watching the show. <laughs>